I've learned a lot of lessons fishing a lot of these creeks down here in Northwest Florida. Um, number one thing uh, we're gonna start with is the rod. Now, this particular rod is a Shakespeare, Shakespeare micrographite, five foot rod. It's an ultra light action. Um, and I'm not particular on brand. I'm not one of those people who get all wrapped up in brands, except for my Ford trucks. Um, but the size is what's important. Having a five foot rod um, is, is critical. Anything longer than that, you'll see when we get back in here and start fishing, you're, you're gonna end up getting, when you're trying to cache and get hung up in the trees over your head, it gives you a, a lot of versatility. Why I picked this particular rod is you can get a smaller rod um, but most of the rods that are going to be smaller than five foot are all going to be one piece. This particular rod does break down. So it can go from five foot to this big, which is great if you're actually going on, on, a, on a hike. You can break this rod down, tie it to the backpack, and you're not going to be sticking up over your head and you're ready to rock. you got hands free. Um, I don't really do that very often, though. Most of the time I'm carrying my fishing pole, it's out in front of me knocking down spider webs. If anybody watching this video is familiar with the woods in Northwest Florida, especially in the summertime, is spider webs. They are everywhere. You got them big giant, what everybody calls banana spiders. So I always keep this out in front of me as I'm walking. I'm knocking down spider webs. No big deal. Um, the reel. Okay, so this reel is a Boo Garcia Cardinal XS, I think they call it, or SX. Yeah, SX10. Um, it's the smaller of the Cardinals. Again, I'm not real brand specific when it comes to reels, but these are, I've had a few of the older Cardinals and they've, they've always been great. They last a long time and they hold quite a bit of line, which is great. You can get smaller reels, um, but a lot of times the smaller reels have the real small spools and you can't get very much line on them. I personally like load my, my reels about halfway um, thickness wise. And a lot of guys like to max the reels out. I see. The way I cast, I use a lot of lightweight lures. Um, you know, you, you end up with tendency to want to like bird's nest on you um, on the smaller reel. So I, I'm a big fan of, of this size reel. I don't care what brand it is. Uh, I just personally like the Cardinals um, because they're smooth, they're quiet, and they seem to last a long time. Um, so that's pretty much a breakdown of the rod and reel. Now when it comes to the line, um, I'm a huge, huge proponent of braided line when I'm fishing these small creeks. Um, in particular, I really, really like uh, the spider wire stealth braid. Um, this is this one in particular is the 15 pound test. Uh, what I'm running out here right now is a 10 pound test. I found that um, the smaller the line, the better, with exceptions. Um, the smaller the line, it's great, but you're gonna get hung up all the time fishing with the lures that I fish with, um, fishing in these creeks. I'm always trying to fish as tight to cover as possible. So I'm, I'm forever getting uh, hung up. If I fish with anything less than 10 pound test, um, you're gonna break off a lot. If you fish with 10 pound, or especially with the 15 pound test, most of the time with these little jig heads that I'm, I'm using, it just bends the hook. You get the get the lure back, you straighten the hook back out, off you go. So I've gone fishing a couple of my buddies back here, and they'll bring mono on their lines, and they're forever getting hung up, broke off, hung up, broke off, hung up, broke off. Um, and I do get hung up, and I break off quite a bit. But you know these little jig heads are pretty cheap, and it's quick to retie, so it ain't that big of a deal. But if you're gonna fish these kind of creeks the way that that I found works pretty well. I definitely, definitely recommend using braid. I'm not real particular uh, on, on the brand that you use, but I've had really, really good success with the spider wire, um, the stealth braid. I've tried the other stuff. It just doesn't seem to cast as good. It doesn't seem to stay um, on the reel as well. And the 10 and 15 pound tests are, are definitely my two go to lines when it comes to fishing back here. All right. Um, the one thing I wanted to mention that's the single most important thing fishing the woods in Florida in the summertime because right now it's August is bug spray um, and you, you gotta have bug spray if you got thermocell they work too um, but DEET bug spray is my go-to thing my wife she's into natural products and all that stuff 
and she's tried just about every kind of bug spray out there that doesn't have DEET. Uh, I've yet to find one that works. I'm sure y'all got suggestions. You know, leave them in the comments, everybody else. But I'm, I like DEET. It works. Keeps the mosquitoes off me. All right. So when it comes to um, what I'm actually using lures wise, I was carrying two smaller boxes in my backpack, um, but it just didn't seem to be as efficient. So I went. I picked up one of these Plano boxes. I like the waterproof ones. Um, just it seems to keep the stuff organized a little bit better. I like the snap down lids. They seem like they're a little bit higher quality. So, um, but what I got in here is my, my go-to stuff when it comes to, to brim fishing. Um, again, I'm a, my favorite go-to lure is a 16th ounce jig head. I prefer some sort of chartreuse color. If I'm fishing tannic water, like a lot of these creeks are, if I start getting into more uh, spring-fed creeks, which there's a lot of around here, I'll switch to a black head or a straight lead head or you know white. I definitely like having some sort of eye on there. This one's even got a little spinner. Um, but I like the eyes on the on the lures. It just seems to draw the fish's attention a little bit more. Gives a little bit more realism. Um, avoid buying the cheapest jig heads that you can find. Reason being, I went to Dick Sporting Goods and I picked up uh, a bunch of jig heads and they had 12 in a pack for the same price as this brand with 10 in a pack well i'd get hung up and it would break the hook off it actually break the hook wouldn't break the line wouldn't break the eye but it actually break the hook um, this particular brand I'm, I'm sorry i don't know what brand it is i, I just recognize it by the packaging it has gamagatsu hooks and they're really really good hooks if they bend out you just bend them back they don't really lose any strength you're not really going to break these hooks off now you can buy some of these from walmart um, that have the the nickel black nickel hook or whatever they call it and they're okay but after it you bend it back two or three times the hook will eventually break um, these little jig heads I've caught plenty of bass on them if you catch anything bigger than about a two pound bass you're really gonna have to get that fish in quick because these hooks will open up a little bit and then most of the time the bass can shake the hook um, but as you can see by in here I got a selection of these little U-tail grubs. These are the Zoom brand. I really, really like Zoom soft plastics to begin with. Um, they're not necessarily the most durable plastic, but they got just incredible action. These tail, it doesn't take anything to get that tail to run. Um, you can pick up some of these smaller kind of like knockoff grubs, but the tail just does not seem to have the action that the Zooms do. You got to work these a lot more. They still catch fish, uh, just it seems like these zooms those tails are just ridiculous and that seems what the fish key in on so I got an assortment of colors um, I, I really like the chartreuse head with either a white body if the water is muddy or if it's more of a straight tannic color I like this color combination right here I'll take one out of the package for you it's a chartreuse and black two-tone um, it gives it a real natural look with just a nice flash to it I always put the black side up so the chartreuse is down uh, with that that color in the tail it just really seems to work good these zooms in the two inch grubs come in a pack of 25 and they come in this nice little plastic box which does a really good job just rock, you can just rock it in your pocket that way you don't have to dig the lure box out every time you want to either put a new grub on or you you got to retie or something Another thing that I'll do is I'll grab a few of these jig heads and I'll just stick them in here and then stick that in my pocket. This is my go-to lure. This is what I'm fishing with. So I'll just keep this in my pocket. That way I got all my other stuff in the backpack for reserve. That way I'm not constantly on off of the backpack and in and out of the tackle box. Um, a few other things I got in here. I just got an assortment of like the, the feather jigs, which I, I've never really had that good of luck with. But occasionally, if, if the fish aren't biting and they're looking for something different, those have a tendency to work. I got a couple uh, eighth ounce jig heads in here uh, for the two and a half and three inch grubs, which you can catch some pretty good fish on these. I, I've caught plenty of largemouth bass on these, um, so it's not just brim fishing with this little tackle box. I got some regular like worm hooks, you know, like the 
wide gap worm hooks for Texas rigging. Um, I got some Texas rig weights in here. I got some split shots, some other stuff. I got some heavier jig heads because uh, every once in a while I'll, I'll go do a little bit of like uh, speckled trout fishing or redfish fishing. And at least these, I can just hook these up, cast them. I got something to fish with anyways. Um, I got some topwater stuff, a couple jitter bugs in here, uh, a hula popper. This your kind of standard, oh, here you go. Here's everything. Uh, standard popper, like Rapala popper. Uh, I got a Rapala uh, husky jerk, jerk bait. Good bass fishing, or this is actually really good for like chain pickerel. And this also you can use as a saltwater bait. Works pretty good. Um, Another good thing when you're fishing a lot of these jig heads, I picked this up at Dick's Sporting Goods. It's just a little jig head cleaner. So he's got a little poker on there. You just set the, the eyelet in there and turn it, and it cleans the eyelet out. That way you ain't got a monkey around with it. Keep that in there. Um, then I have an assortment of just small, like, worm hooks and a couple of bobbers for if I want to do some live bait fishing. So, pretty simple kit. Um, not a whole lot to it, but. You can catch a lot of fish with what's in this in this box. Now I got an assortment of soft plastics that I keep in here. Uh, I'm just gonna go through these real quick. Again, these are some of the Yum brand bigger grubs. These are the three inch, um, the three inch grubs. I got pumpkin, white. Um, what are these? Watermelon? Oh, green pumpkin. Yeah, so green pumpkin, some regular pumpkin. Um, Here's some of the Zoom 3-inch grubs. This is a really good color combination, too, in the 2-inch size. The chartreuse and the, the brown pumpkin. That's actually a really good color combo. I got some just crawfish, some U-tail worms, um, some Zoom finesse worms. These are really good for bass fishing. I really like this color. This is what they call green weenie. Kind of a silly color, but see there or not. It's like a pink. I'm sorry. Like a purple let me just take one out and show you. It's like a purple and green translucent color. Really, really good for uh, real clear water. I do a lot of fishing in Holmes Creek, uh, which you can find a couple of videos of that on my, my YouTube page here, where it's it's spring fed and it's when the water's low, it's crystal clear. So having something real um, natural looking and real subtle sometimes is the ticket so that's pretty much it when it comes to the fishing kit guys um, that's really all you need uh, in the rest of stuff in the backpack is just like my regular go-to you know fire kit and first aid kit and I got some some other stuff in here I'm not even gonna go through it all because you know I got a compass uh, headlamp a couple knives uh, just a few other stuff just you know not worth going through everything I got in the kit but that's pretty much the basics of it so we're gonna go do some fishing here I'll show you some of the techniques that I use they're again real straightforward and see if we can't catch a fish alright guys so one of the things I look for um, when I'm fishing little creeks like this um, especially in the summer months is shade I'm always gonna try to aim for shade um, what I have right here is this little clump of trees that come down in the creek and I got this little shaded deep water spot right here. I always tell myself in my head, look for the dark spots. What I mean by dark spots are the, the darker water, the deeper water, in the shade. Um, I've always had pretty good luck on this little spot right here. So make a cast over there. I want to try to stay as tight to the bank as I can. Because um, the other thing I'm looking for is, is the, the flow of the water. As this creek comes down here, it passes these, this clump of trees creates a little eddy right here. This little, little eddy is where the fish are going to want to sit waiting to ambush prey. So let's see if we can get going on. All right, so my preferred knot on this is a uh, Palomar knot. My version of it. I don't know if it's the right way to do it. I just take the line and I fold it in half. All right. Pinch that down nice and tight. Pass it through the jig head. 
holding both sides and just tie an overhand knot. Okay. And before you really cinch that overhand knot down, open the loop up. Pass the lure through the loop. And then pull it down tight and always make sure that your knot is in the middle of the loop, not along the seam there. Pull it down tight and then what I do is I, I cut off um, everything but about a quarter inch tag end. I'm using my, my trusty wire strippers because my fishing pliers are in my boat. Okay. When it comes to the grub, I always hook it so the darkest color is on the hook side. It keeps the, the lightest color towards the belly, which is more natural look for fish. The fine balance you got to strike here between letting the lure sit and then sink and keeping it in the strike zone and moving it fast enough that you don't get hung up on, on the snags that are down towards the bottom of the creek. So you kind of got to find that happy medium of what the fish want. Get the lure in front of them but get it out of there fast enough that it doesn't sink and get hung up. These little guys are here seem to be pretty prevalent in this creek. Look at the colors on that fish, man. It's a pretty little fish. And again, this is a what they call a long-eared sunfish. I think it's pretty pretty obvious. They got pretty long ears. You know they're not ears. Now I felt him. I got that cast out there, I was reeling in, I felt the bite. Got reeling, felt the bite. Got reeling, then I felt the weight. And you you got to find, again, that balance of setting the hook and keeping the lure moving. A crappie. I have never caught a crappie out of this creek. Never. I had no idea they were even in here. That is spectacular. That just made my day, guys. You don't even understand. I've been I've been fishing this creek for ten years, and I've never caught a crappie out of here, man. It's pretty cool. Out of all the all the freshwater fish, this is definitely my favorite when it comes to eating. Uh, they're, they're such a good eating fish, and usually where there's one, there's more. They're, they're a schooling fish, so I'm really excited to catch him, man. But we're going to let this little fella go. But that's just, that's just cool, man. I'm so happy I caught a crappie out of here. Made my day. <laughs>